Hi guys, welcome back to another video. As you can see, this is not very normal. We're doing a sit down vlog today. As you tell by the title, it's gonna be my worst injuries. If you didn't know, I'm an ex GBR gymnast, also worked at Cirque du Soleil. So in my gymnastics career, I've had too many injuries. I'll be going over some of the more serious ones today. However, it still is an Ash Watson vlog. So there will be fails in here, compilations, funny videos, finny fo finny? funny photos, rather than me just, as Ellis would say, chatting wass for 10, 15 minutes. Hey guys, it's Editor Craig here. Just to let you know that this video does have a graphic warning on it. Ash does go into details with his injuries and there's also pictures. So I will pop up a little text on the screen to let you know when that's coming up. Let's go on with the video. In 2008, when it all started, I won the under 18 British Championships, which meant that me and Reese Bedford my boy got to travel out to Japan for a competition out there, which was amazing. And then basically, during the one hour warm up, I was doing a new vault. It was a Yuchenko double twist. If you don't know what that is, here's the video. <laughs> it was a fairly new vault for me, not done it too many times. It would borderline the risk reward on my sort of skill level at the time on vault. I was never a big vaulter. So basically, in the one hour warm up, did Yuchenko double twist. Can you see me if I, zo if I zoom you out? Can I? Here we are. Okay, so imagine I'm twisting, and as I landed my twist, sort of my left leg sort of got stuck in the ground, and I carried on twisting out of it. So I landed a little bit short under rotating, so that meant that my ACL sort of just popped off. Sorry about that. Maybe I'll put a graphic warning. Come to me. So I was on the floor sort of like, oh my God. It wasn't necessarily very painful. It was just dead weird. So then all the Japanese doctors came over. I couldn't understand what they were saying. They were sort of all just like pulling up my leg, twisting it and stuff. And they got literally just strapped it up so I couldn't even feel my toes. And it turned out they would just said like, if, you know, how does it feel? Cause I could, I could stand up and I could, I could walk. Just felt very tight at the top of my calf. I don't know if anybody out there has had ACL problems before, but it just felt like really tight at the top of my calf. They strapped it all up and they said, if, well, you know, if you can walk, if you're okay. I, I personally wanted to compete. Obviously, we'd flown out to Japan. This was probably the biggest comp I've, I've done for Great Britain that, at that point. But all the way to Japan, I was like, I, I want to compete. Me and my coach, Chris Lowe at the time, we decided that we'd skip floor and vault, understandably. Competition started, I missed floor, went to pommel, did a banging routine on pommel horse and sort of landed on one leg. Um, managed to get to the final, but I didn't manage to do that. You'll find out why. Next apparatus was the rings so I didn't do a dismounting warm-up to sort of just hung off dropped onto one foot and I was like okay come on Ash like this is the moment now come on just gotta do a dismount at the time my, my dismount was just a double somersault with a full twist so me and my coach said okay let's just let's just do a double somersault no twisting no nothing just nice on the axis safe landing move on did a nice rings routine did the dismount and as I landed another graphic warning because obviously I, I had no ACL so when I landed, I literally felt my knee like almost go like that. Just come out of this, this joint. Sorry, sorry. So then basically at that point, my ACL was already snapped from vault. When I landed on the rings, what happened is it mashed all my cartilage. It folded over and tore. If I would not have carried on and done the rings dismount and just left it at the ACL, I would not have had as many issues as I do now with my knee. Let me close that and keep looking at myself. I'm sorry. I'm so good, damn good looking. So then I'm on the floor, like obviously beefing my eyes out because it's so painful and, and whatever. Took my lungs off, got me in the crutches. I ended up going to a Japanese hospital, just in my little leotard, like little 17, 18 year old little Ash. Just in my little, in my little leotard, just looking around. All these doctors are playing around with my leg. I felt so uncomfortable. <laughs> if I remember rightly, they didn't really tell us what the problem was they sort of they give me like a like a half cast and then bandaged it all up and then when we were flying home to to get it checked out but um the flight home was good i got extra leg room they give me the, the front of the plane and extra leg room i remember i remember so vividly that i watched prison break season one for the first time on that plane if you haven't seen prison break watch it the first season is unbelievable remember like everyone was sleeping it was an overnight flight i literally just shouting sat on the edge of my seat shouting waking everybody up and babbling i don't think you've ever heard me speak this much i don't think so then when i got home um went straight to my physio jill davy the og what a wonderful woman saw her first thing when i got back she literally she's a magician is, is jill i unstrapped it she, she got my leg went like that and lifted the shin above which is what they do to test if your ACL, because if your ACL is intact, 
it don't move but if there's nothing there your shin just comes up just did that once and i i, I remember so so clearly but i'm i'm laid there like hoping that it's it's not terrible literally i've never seen it on her face before she looked up to me with this sort of oh my god i'm so sorry ash look and that's when i knew that you know we had a we had a long road ahead I had to have that operated on first. I had the operation and I had to wait, I think, a month or two and then have my ACL reconstructed, which was a ball ache, which sent me back loads and loads and loads. But I literally spent maybe three months bed bound, not a bit of weight bear, and I spent that entire time watching that 70s show in bed. <laughs> if you haven't watched that show, watch that as well, that's brilliant. Maybe I should review TV programs. I watch a lot. Watch Psych, actually. Psych is the best. Watch Psych. Anything else on that? <laughs> I've said too much. I baffled, I'm sorry. I wanna keep you still engaged with the video. Let's have a little laughter break um, and let's roll a montage of the fails that didn't break me in the past. Oh, me duck. We're good, it's okay. Back up. Oh, I just injured myself, ha ha ha, joke. <laughs> enjoyed that as much as I did. <laughs> I miss doing crazy stuff like that. I need to do more of that. I'm getting old now. 30 years old if you believe it. Well, may maybe you do believe it. <laughs> the next up on the series of unfortunate events of Ash Watson's gymnastics career is 2011. So after the rehab went really well with the ACL and the cartilage, we got back to all six apparatus. Summer of 2011, me, Matthew Firth and Sam Fern my boys, we qualified for Universiad in China, it was. It was a week before, we was at Lushall, the National Sports Centre. We was up there a week before and I was doing a floor routine. Last tumble, double Arabian, blowing out my bottom because I'm knackered. Do do do, as we round off, back flip, and as I take off, to do the double Arabian, gymnasts out there you know you put your feet behind you to take off. We didn't hear a, a loud bang, a loud pop. It wasn't too painful for me. But uh, if you know Sammy, part of our team, she broke her Achilles as well and she felt exactly the same that I did. It was almost like we felt like the floor had given way. Same with Sammy, I just took off. It just felt like our heel went through the floor. So for me, I, I was doing a double Arabian but I did one somersault and sort of fell and sort of kicked out and sort of landed on one leg, rolled out and sort of stood up to turn around to say, the floor, the floor's broken. And as I stood up to do that, I sort of collapsed the floor because obviously I had nothing there to, to keep me up, so I just folded. Shh. Ali Little at the time was the physio at Lillishaw. You came running straight over. The test for that is they squeeze your, your calf. So when you're on your front, if you, if you squeeze your calf, obviously it, it like flinches your foot. Is that my slippers? It flinches your foot, so obviously it's this one here. So I've got a scar going all the way up here. Basically, mine mine snapped from sort of where it attaches to the calf muscle, so it almost sheared apart. So normally, when it was a loud bang, it rips off from the heel attachment, pings up the calf, and makes a loud pop. But mine actually like sort of just sheared apart from from the middle of the calf. So that so that would have been my fourth leg surgery because with my previous cartilage, I had a couple surgeries after that because it kept inflaming and it needs to keep shaving away at the cartilage. But if I show you, this is probably say cumulatively, if that's a word, maybe three years of rehabbing my legs and it's all on this one same leg. Let me know if you see a difference in the size. This is my bad leg, the one that's had four surgeries, this is my, my better leg. Can you see the, the difference in size? You can definitely, and if I go up here, if I bring you down, don't worry, I'm not gonna strip. But if you look at my calves, you can really see in my calves, if I was to rise up on my calves, can you see the difference? Stop looking, stop looking at my bum. Craig, blow that out please.
Four leg surgeries all on the same leg, not been a weight bearing, all that kind of stuff. It's really impacted the size of it and I'm currently at the gym still now when I work out, I try and do extra extra sets, extra reps on my left side. And it's still weaker because for the ACL, the original leg injury, the way they made a new ACL was a the stripped bit of my hamstring, then literally screwed through my femur, then through, it's like fibula or tibula or some, something like that, I can't remember. But they screwed through that and then basically they just weave your hamstring through that and plug it. That, that's pretty messed up right with the achilles that obviously was a massive blow to me i didn't get to go to china that was that was gonna be like my big comeback um an international competition at university artist the multi-sport event it's literally one down from the olympics in in the in the size and the mass of the athletes that get to compete so that would have been awesome for my cv going into the future because obviously 2012 olympics and next year an achilles reconstruction put me out for another another year so that totally wrote me off for for the olympics unfortunately you have to learn how to walk properly again it was so painful i remember waking up after surgery obviously remember that they've just reattached it so my foot's like pointed i i, I woke up from the days and the, the the woman like the nurse came in to put my cast on and she's like she's like, i'm sorry love but this is gonna be a little bit uncomfortable i was like okay okay so she she had my foot like like this she pushed my toe like into her chest to try and stretch it out before before strapping it up Literally, I just had it put back together, and she's there, like pulling it onto her chest, trying to stretch it out to put the pot on. You joking me? That's probably the most pain I've ever, ever been in my entire life. Because of also as well, in my head, she was gonna snap it again. Oh, 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 oh it makes me shiver. My apologies. True Ash Watson style, comeback number two was on its way. So after I finished all the, the rehab and all that kind of jazz, we decided to not do all six apparatus anymore. I've had so many injuries in my left leg that we didn't want to risk hurting it again. And also for me to fit into a team for Europeans, Worlds, Olympics in the future, I'd had so much time off of floor and vault and doing all the apparatus. I was so far behind that my all around score wasn't going to be top two, top three, which is what I need to be to be in a team, to be an all rounder. So we decided that I was just going to do four apparatus and specialize parallel bars and, and horizontal bar. After all the rehab, 2013 was a, was a massive year for me qualified for the Europeans, managed to get myself a high bar final, unfortunately that didn't go to plan but I'd put my face and my name out there on, on a big stage and then also that same year was world championships so I managed to go out there for the parallel bars, however eight weeks before I was training, doing the routines and basically for me to go for P bars I needed a, a higher start value so I had a tricks in my routine so I decided that I, I had to do a straddle front so it's where you do a, like a full somersault forwards and catch the P bars, you can either catch upper arms or on your hands it, it gives you more points if you catch on your hands so obviously we went for that one but unfortunately one day in training as i was coming round, as a lot of gymnasts have done i came round to catch the p bar but my my middle finger sort of caught it like that bang and i boom and basically i, I tore tendon at the side of my finger you can see how it's still still pretty fat and it chipped off a bit of bone. That was a big one for me because I'm about to go to the highest ranked gymnastics competitions of my entire life and I've just broke my finger. What do I do? We're weeks out. I need to keep showing the national coaches. I'm still capable of doing my routine at a high level. That makes me worthy for me still to go. They only want to send people that are capable of getting a final and possibly a medal, which my routine could do as long as I could do it. That was a stressful month or two for me and Chris. We're having to plan when routine days were, let's say, three days in the week where we had to do routines we had to make sure that the days that we weren't doing routines 
because we were rehabbing it. Me and Chris had to make a plan for the routine days. We managed to sort of get me to a point where I could jump on the P-bars, do a couple swings, get off. Then I'd do one go of the skills that really hurt it. And then I'd strap it up, strap it up, get in my own head. This is going to be 45 seconds of absolute agony. What's 45 seconds? What's 45 seconds? Every time I had routines, I had to sit there and be like, this is going to be absolutely painful. I always just say, think about it in a year's time, in two years' time, in 10, 20. You're going to sit there. You, you forget what the pain feels like. You forget. So you just need to do it now. And honestly, it took absolutely everything out of me. I feel like I have got a strong pain threshold or a big pain threshold this got me it was absolute agony so imagine every time i was hanging on the bar i was i was pulling a torn tendon and chipped off bone but then in the end we got to the world championships i got on i did my routine i got through it did did the skill landed my dismount whoa unfortunately it wasn't enough for a final but you know that was the biggest stage i've ever been on and i was just happy that the journey that we went through and what we had to face on the lead up to it and then to get onto that podium do my routine the best i could stay on what more could I ask for the rest of it were in the judges hands and the other competitors but I did exactly what I wanted to do I'm honestly so proud of myself that we kept pushing through it would have been so easy to, to give up and just sort of say like you know it's too painful like I don't want to do long-term damage to it which it kind of has but I mean who needs your fingers let me just go get my duck it's beeping the <laughs> spot <laughs> What are you saying? Welcome back after that interlude. The duck was lovely, thank you for asking. And then moving on, then then I would have sort of riddled with, we call them niggles. They're injuries that are enough to stop you from training, but not enough to, to stop you training for too long of a period of time, or you have to adjust your training. So I had a lot of shoulder problems, a lot of gym have shoulder impingement problems. I had wrist problems, I had, I had wrist surgery. I got like a, I got a Harry Potter scar. I'll show you a picture actually. And um, that put me out for, for, for months and months. I battled a lot with injuries, and I was, I was very, very unfortunate. But it's something that I've had to live with and I've, I've come to terms with and I don't regret anything. Really proud of myself for pushing through, coming back so many times. Yeah, and then that sort of brings me to, let's say, the final injury. It wasn't the worst injury I've ever had, but it was definitely the most impactful on me and my career. You might have seen it on Nile's video before. I was basically on high bar, I was doing a Kovach, and on the action, on the, the, the strongest bit of the bar at the bottom, as I was swinging at the bottom, my hand guard snapped and I came down and I sort of came down, my feet hit the floor and I arched like that. And I sort of all the force, imagine all the force coming down on you, bang, and fold it back almost like my, my head was hitting my bum. I felt, I felt it all starting to spasm. So then I, I rolled onto my side as quick as I could, grabbed my legs and just held it there. And did, didn't move anything apart from just holding it still as I could. I could feel it all just really tightening up. That was the most scared I've ever been in my entire life. The force and the way it fell, like it's, it sprung me back up. It was so powerful. I was holding my legs. All I could think at the moment was, I hope I can feel my feet. I hope I can wiggle them. I hope I can feel my legs. I was absolutely petrified that I'd never be able to walk again. And I just, fuck. I, I was I was laid there for literally 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Well, absolutely not daring to try and move my foot just in case I, I wouldn't be able to. But then eventually I, I took the leap and tried and obviously everything was fine, everything is fine. It just turned out that I, I, I jarred my back. Honestly, it was brutal. It's very similar to what Zonderland did. I think at a competition, it was, it was basically that. Dave, Dave saw it from front on and he, he couldn't believe his eyes. He came sprinting over. Mentally for me, I couldn't get back on the bar and do giants because the entire time I'm thinking about snapping my guard and then whenever I was doing anything else, training or anything, I kind of felt, I was like, is, is this worth it? Like I was saying before, the risk reward, before, I didn't care. I just wanted to be the best gymnast I could be. Whereas after that incident, I was thinking about future Ash and about life outside gymnastics and whether doing the dangerous skills and stuff was worth it. If it's gonna, if I, if I'm not gonna better walk again in my life, or I'm gonna hurt myself doing something else, or and that's that was a real switch for me. Um, and obviously, that's then when I retired. So there you go. That's turning into more of a life story, really. This is the first video I've ever done like this, talking to the camera. It's just me and you. Me and you, baby. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't speak too fast. I hope I wasn't too erratic with my arms and body, but I like to, you know, use actions and get involved and show things. Throw a comment down there. I'll just 
cool story, bro. <laughs> Let me know if you was interested in that at all. If you've come this far in the video, thank you so much, so, so much. 65% of you watching are not subscribed. It's absolutely for free. Please click that subscribe button down below. It helps me absolutely massively. It costs you absolutely nothing. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see videos like this in the future, let me know what you'd like me to talk about. I've got plenty and plenty of stories. Loads about Niall, loads about Luke. And if you just want some gossip over a cup of tea, let me know. Okay, that's it for me then. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, I love you more than life itself. I've also definitely left so, so much out of that story, but obviously I was baffling for so long, I didn't want to bore you too much. And also, in my old age, I, honestly, the timelines and what happened to me yesterday is a blur. So it was hard enough trying to remember the major injuries, let alone the, the between us.